First off, I would like to thank Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito for visiting our facilities today and for their leadership in helping guide the Commonwealth through this crisis. Since the beginning of this crisis, the help and guidance we've received from the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, their staff, and the other state officials, as well as local officials here today, Braintree Mayor uh, Chuck Kakuras, have helped us remain a viable company that is poised to continue to grow and to work our way out of this crisis. I'd also like to thank the members of the press who are here today in attendance. Your work to help amplify the guidance from the governor and health entities and to help educate how we all can stay safe has been very helpful to the folks in the Commonwealth as well as to the team here at Simmons Industries. Simmons Industries was founded in 1939 by my grandfather Paul Simmons when he invented the pressure balancing valve. Since then, we've proudly manufactured plumbing and water management products. We, we currently uh, produce over 3,000 unique SKUs at our, at our factory just across the street. Over half the homes in Massachusetts have a, a product from Simmons in their bathroom, and our temporal shower valve has set the standard for durability and reliability since its launch in 1968 and its relaunch last March. During the past 80 years, many world events have presented challenges to our business, but never before have we been faced with a challenge as great as the COVID crisis. The unique combination of trying to keep a business stable while at the same time keeping your team safe and healthy is unprecedented. But as we always do, we tapped into our commitment to quality, our teamwork, and our customers to find ways to create solutions. Our custom design team utilized 3D printers to create ear savers, which were donated with PPE to help frontline workers at the South Shore Hospital. We tapped into our expertise in making copper, brass, and bronze products to create the Simmons Safe Key, an antimicrobial touchless, uh, sorry, an antimicrobial touchless door opener, which is helping us to raise money for Feeding America, the country's largest health, re health relief, so, sorry, hunger relief organization. And finally, our IoT-enabled Evolution platform. The Evolution platform has allowed hotels to monitor and manage their water during this time of crisis and limited staffing, and will eventually allow them to reopen safely. I have never been prouder of the team for coming together over the past 60 days to support each other and our customers. I would again like to thank Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito for their guidance during this crisis. There is certainly no playbook for managing a business through a pandemic, so their guidance that they have provided and continue to provide has helped our, our team stay safe and that has been invaluable. Thanks to this help, our business has been able to weather the crisis and we are now focused on growing our business and continuing to service our customers. On behalf of the men and women at Simmons Industries, thank you Governor Baker and thank you Governor Pol Lieutenant Governor Polito and welcome to Simmons. Thanks Tim and, and thanks again for uh, hosting us here today. I can't help but think about the fact that the Lieutenant Governor and I were here uh, just about two years ago and um, well suffice it to say that when we spoke to the team here we weren't abiding by the same rules with respect to social distancing that everybody does now. There was probably I don't know 150 people maybe more uh, right here in this lobby um, at that time and um, and as the Lieutenant Governor and I walked the uh, manufacturing floor, we talked with, with Tim and with Mike Brown about um, the issues associated with changing the nature of the way they operate um, to both meet the industry specific guidelines that were developed by the Commonwealth, but also the guidance and advice they got from the local Board of Health here in Braintree. And thank you, Mayor Kukoros, for being with us, and thank you. Senator Timothy as well. Um, and it's interesting, Tim said that one of the, that the people were okay with the idea that there were going to be changes in the way they actually did their work. And given everything everybody knows about um, the contagion associated with COVID, that seemed pretty consistent with what they would have expected and anticipated. But he, Tim said the hardest part was the social distancing and separation in the cafeteria. Um, where people now, when you, we walk through the cafeteria, people were sitting one to a table. The tables were pretty far apart. Not a lot of conversation going on uh, between and among the, the members of the team. And you can see that, you know, one of the major challenges that we will all face going forward on this 
um, not just here at Simmons, but in workplaces across the Commonwealth and probably across the country, is some of that intimacy, that, that physical intimacy that is so much a part of the shared commitment to work that many people who work together for a long period of time have um, will in fact uh, go away. And, um, and that is going to be the way it is going to be for some period of time here until we get to the point where we have treatments um, or a vaccine. And, and I think in many ways um, we focus, as we rightly should, on many of the key issues associated with the production line. But once again, the production line issues, those are ones people, generally speaking, probably have the capacity and the ability to adapt to pretty quickly. It's the loss of the social, the socialization issues um, and the, the, the sense of team and the uh, sense of community that comes with those uh, opportunities to sit together and talk about what's going on with your family or what's going on with uh, your work or what's going on uh, just generally that um, we're going to all have to deal with. Um, I say all the time that uh, I talk to the Lieutenant Governor more now than I ever have and I spend less time with her, far less. And, um, and I think that's going to be true for a lot of us as we all uh, move forward. The, the, the sort of physical closeness associated with work is clearly going to change. And with that, obviously, will come some pretty significant changes along with it. Um, the Lieutenant Governor and I were actually very positive about how many uh, companies here in the Commonwealth said they were going to continue to make it possible for their employees to work from home and work remotely. We, the Commonwealth, happen to be one of those. I certainly believe it's absolutely the right thing to do with respect to um, with COVID and all the guidance we've gotten from the public health folks and others. Um, but that will create some distance. And it won't just be physical distance. It will be lost. There will be a lost uh, opportunity there for people to engage with one another. And, um, and, and I think in some ways um, that's part of what uh, the next act associated with all this will be about. I do want to give a quick update, as I do every day, on testing and on hospitalizations. Yesterday, uh, almost 8,000 tests were reported across the Commonwealth. That brings the total number of tests conducted to over 776,000, uh, almost 777,000. Less than 10 percent of the tests reported yesterday came back positive. Uh, that percent of positive tests per day has remained at or below 10 percent for about a week now. That's a very promising development and a promising trend, one that we obviously hope to continue to see a decrease over time. As of yesterday, there were 2,472 patients who were hospitalized uh, with COVID, which is another decline from the day before. And as we've said repeatedly, it's this public health data that is the primary indicator of how COVID-19 is impacting our communities and it will determine how, when, and where we reopen our economy. On Monday, we announced a new public-facing dashboard of six key indices that we'll use to note our progress, trending positive, in progress, or trending negative. That dashboard will be calculated based on many of the stats that I go through on a typical uh, daily report. But in addition to that, there are a few more that health experts have made clear to us are particularly important with respect to tracking the penetration and the presence of the virus. The dashboard includes COVID-19 positive test rates, the number of individuals who died from COVID-19, the number of hospitalized patients with COVID-19, our healthcare system readiness, which is a measure of ICU beds, surge capacity, and a number of other elements like that, and then testing capacity generally in our contact tracing program. We hope that as time goes on and we slowly and carefully reopen different sectors, that the dashboard will keep trending in the right direction. And it's a critically important, and I can't say this enough, that we all remember that everybody has a role to play in slowing that spread of COVID. Please continue to do the four things we talk about on a pretty regular basis. Cover your face when you can't distance yourself, the science is clear, science is clear. Simple face coverings prevent the spread of this disease incredibly effectively. 
wash your hands and watch, wash search, surf surfaces open. I'm going to try that one again. Wash your hands and wash surfaces often. That one, of course, also needs no explanation. Keep your distance. Again, we know this one by now is critically important. The more we stay six feet apart from one another, whenever possible, the more we stop the spread of the virus. And lastly, stay vigilant for symptoms and stay home if you think you're sick. We all know that one by now, too. And as I said several days ago, we significantly expanded uh, the Department of Public Health has significantly expanded the criteria through which people can get tested uh, if they believe they're symptomatic. Um, we want people to take full advantage of that. Um, DPH has issued guidance on this, and uh, the Division of Insurance has also issued guidance uh, to health insurers as well. And finally, we'll continue to pursue every avenue that's available to us to make sure we get PPE, personal protective equipment, into the hands of frontline workers and law enforcement officials in every community across the Commonwealth. As of yesterday, we've delivered over 11 million pieces of PPE, including masks, gowns, gloves, and ventilators. As businesses reopen, it will also be important for them to stock up on the certain supplies that they need, such as cleaning spray, disinfecting wipes, and face coverings. And remember, businesses should not buy medical grade masks. They should be reserved for our healthcare workers. And as part of our reopening plan, we've developed two resources for business owners that they can pursue. A guide to educate businesses about what supplies are needed to return to the workplace and a portal to connect businesses with manufacturers and distributors. We also launched a portal to connect Massachusetts businesses in need of supplies and manufacturers whom are actively producing and selling hygienic and protective materials for them. On Monday, we launched phase one of our four-phase plan to reopen the state's economy in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The goal of the phased reopening is to methodically allow businesses, services, and activities to resume while avoiding a resurgence of COVID-19 that could overwhelm the healthcare system and erase much of the progress that we've all made so far. The reopening advisory board in conjunction and in consultant consultation with the Department of Public Health published new workplace safety standards and sector specific safety protocols to ensure that as employers, workers, and customers return, they do so in as safe an environment as possible. And today we're pleased to be here at Simmons to tour their manufacturing facility in Braintree. Simmons, as Tim said, is a third generation company that's been in Massachusetts for more than 80 years. They manufacture high precision commercial and residential plumbing products, including many used by hospitals and healthcare facilities. They've been operating since March to supply products needed to support healthcare facilities, including small batch equipment like 3D printed mask holders, but like many others, their production and demand significantly slowed down due to the impact of COVID-19. But as phase one begins and they start to ramp back up, this facility has done a terrific job in reimagining their operations from the floor layout to new cleaning protocols. Simmons also had to implement new protocols, as I said before, for social distancing, hygiene, staffing, and operations. Moving forward, they're working to scale their operations back up as customers start to come back and as we all return to some sort of a new normal. All of us, employers, workers, customers, and community leaders continue to have a role in pushing back against the virus. Simmons stands as a strong example of how this can be done safely and responsibly, and we applaud their efforts to adjust to these difficult times. The Lieutenant Governor will talk more about the necessary steps businesses need to take and how we can support them in that process. But to businesses across the Commonwealth, we just want you to know that we'll work with you and we'll support you in your efforts to create a new kind of workplace. Our shared goal is the safety of the employees and the workers throughout the Commonwealth. And you need to continue to implement the measures and protect your customers that are deemed appropriate by our guidance. For more information on the reopening advisory board and these new resources, you can always visit www.mass.gov slash reopening. Now I'd like to turn it over to the LG.
Good afternoon, and thank you, Governor. I'm pleased to be here in Braintree with Mayor Kokoris and Senator Timothy, and with Tim and your team at Simmons. It was great to see your workers today. Uh, as the Governor said, this is an impressive facility, and it was really awesome to see it uh, now uh, turned into a safer place, uh, given the safety standards that we've laid out here in the Commonwealth, and to see those features uh, physically in place uh, to give the workers the comfort and the confidence they need to do their jobs. We are grateful for the hard work, the generosity and dedication of Simmons Industry and its employees in their PPE production to help support our Commonwealth's response to COVID-19. I have the privilege of serving as the co-chair along with Secretary Keneally of the Reopening Advisory Board. And on Monday, our administration and the board unveiled our report, Reopening Massachusetts. It offers a phased plan to safely and responsibly reopen our Massachusetts economy. Governor Baker mentioned our administration's ongoing PPE procurement and delivery throughout the Commonwealth since we began the fight against COVID-19. And as we enter each new phase of the reopening plan, the use of PPE, that personal protective equipment, will remain an essential component in the battle against the virus. In crafting our plan, uh, the advisory board met with more than 75 industry associations and community coalitions that represent more than 112,000 businesses and over 2 million employees. And in the case of manufacturing businesses such as Simmons, we received a presentation from our friends at the Associated Industries of Massachusetts and the Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative. They discussed with us the policies and practices that businesses here in Massachusetts, as well as in other states, were developing or had implemented to limit the transmission of COVID-19. It was through those conversations that we were able to craft a new framework for how to keep workers safer and customers safer as businesses reopen. And to that end, in addition to announcing the plan on Monday, we also unveiled mandatory workplace safety standards. And these standards are supported by guidelines and procedures, based basically best practices, for businesses to be able to adopt and do this in a fashion that makes it easy for them to do so in order to demonstrate that their workplace is safer physically. And as different industries begin their phased reopening process, detailed policies and guidelines and best practices will be provided by the state so that we can give businesses a sense of how to comply with these safety standards. These types of guidances that each sector and industry and business must follow are the general social guidance, the face coverings, the hand washing and the distancing, as well as the mandatory safety standards that we've talked about and the specific sector protocols. The sector-specific guidance and recommended best practices aim to reduce the risk in, of transmission in a workplace. And each sector will also have access to a, a, sec, a sector circular, a, a document, a resource which will include specific mandatory safety standards and recommended best practices in social distancing, hygiene protocols, staffing and operations, and cleaning and disinfecting for each sector. Businesses are expected to implement these protocols in addition to the safety standards that we've highlighted. For manufacturing, a specific checklist was developed to ensure that businesses and their managers uh, may, may remain compliant. This is really important because we want workers to feel and be safer when they come back to their jobs and also for the customers, for the people visiting and coming in and out of these uh, workplaces that they also are assured that that business took it seriously and it implemented a plan. Here at Simmons, they've demonstrated this to us today and it was really great to see it uh, in reality, like staggering lunch and break times to ensure proper social distancing, which isn't normal, right? That's not how we uh, like to have lunch when you have a break, but they've implemented a, a plan here and it's become more normal uh, for the workers. Frequent cleaning and sanitization of workstations uh, where there is a high amount of traffic. Partitions between, between workstations uh, 
as well as added distance around the break rooms. Their petitions are like plastic curtains to have a, a, a physical barrier between workers. Requiring employees to wear masks at all times and gloves whenever possible and where it makes sense. And all employees, as we uh, were today when entering the workplace, uh, have their temperatures uh, taken every morning uh, before uh, coming to work. Businesses are also required to self-certify by developing a control plan, which we have a template for, outlining how its workplace will implement, implement the safety standards. This compliance attestation poster has already been completed by Simmons, and it's both signed and displayed for everyone to see. This special certifying poster complements the workplace safety posters hanging uh, throughout their facility so that it can be you know, physically and publicly demonstrated that they've complied. The workplace safety standards will be jointly enforced by local boards of health. Uh, the mayor and his team have been already working with Simmons uh, here to have a, a plan in place and also working with our Department of Public Health and our Division of Labor Standards. Uh, businesses will have until May 25th to complete these required steps. These are businesses that uh, might have been essential but did not have these safety standards in place at the beginning of the epidemic, and now we have, they have until Monday to complete the steps as Simmons has done. Our goal with enforcement is to educate and promote compliance. Working with cities and towns, our goal is to support businesses, give them the tools and the support they need to succeed in making these adjustments. Simmons Industries has taken these guidelines seriously and is already implementing new safety protocols to ensure the safety of its employees and others and, and contribute to the mitigation of the spread. We are grateful for their partnership. We're grateful for the opportunity today to use their work as an example uh, to other employers across our Commonwealth around that how to make your workplace safer. On behalf of the Reopening Advisory Board, I would like to thank you for your compliance and your cooperation in running a safe and responsible worksite as you scale up your operations here in the Commonwealth. I encourage all employers to visit www.mass.gov forward slash reopening to learn more about what is required to return to back to work. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to the governor. Questions for us or for Questions. Tim? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, since you're being Sure, that's a great, <clears throat> great question. Um, I would just say that every week that went by, as we implemented each step that we learned from, and we learned where uh, when we started taking temperatures, it was very awkward for folks, and then we tried to put in some steps in place to make it less awkward. Um, I will share with you that the process now includes 80s music, which is played in this hallway. Uh, it just makes it more relaxed and more of a normal thing. And these are the kinds of things that may sound like silly, but we're trying to take things that are very uncomfortable and make them comfortable. Um, as we were talking with Charlie, the social distancing was a very large issue. We had to really enforce and tell folks that this is very important. And then as we moved, because again, we've been open the whole time, we went, moved into masks early on. That was another thing we had to really enforce. So each stage, I think, we were able to learn from it and, and, and apply some of that knowledge and then put more steps into place. But I think it's really a credit to our team here. They've accepted it. But not only have they accepted it, it's, it's almost like the, the true shining of humanity coming back out. They, they're like, let's go, let's fight on. They, they don't sit there and say, woe is me, or complain. They actually step up to the plate and do what we need to do to make sure that we're creating a safe work, work, work environment. Tim, do you have a system in place that if somebody says, hey, my boss is yelling at me with a mask on, that they can go to someone and they won't feel like they're going to be getting in trouble? Yes, I, I wouldn't call it a whistleblowing. Uh, type system. We're a small enough organization here that um, we see each other each and every day. Um, and I would say early on, and again, remember, we were open the whole time as an essential provider of manufacturing materials for hospitals and healthcare. So we had to learn before the protocols were in place. As an example, masks were not required, but we started to put them in. Temperature check was not required, but we put them in. So I would say, yes, we do have a, a policy, but no, it is not a police state. We are not trying to have people report 
to each other. It's more, I would really say it's teammates supporting teammates. And again, that's, that's what makes me most proud about this company at this point is that people stepped up. They didn't ask or complain, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? They just stepped forward. And I think that, that will happen for all companies. I think everyone is willing to do their part. And if we do our part, we will, you know, we will get through this together. Yeah, so unfortunately we did have to deal with layoffs. We prepared for this crisis um, like, like no other. I mean, in 08, our business dropped 25 to 30 percent. There was no way we could predict what 2008, on top of a health crisis that could shut down the United States of America, was going to turn out to be. Uh, fortunately for us, we were able to balance out the business in April and we're starting to see it climb again. That does not mean we're out of this. Uh, it does not mean that it's all sunshine and roses moving forward. We still have a lot of work to do, but um, we prepared for the worst case scenario and we're able to come out of it. Based on that, we've actually, in the last 10 days alone, rehired 25 people because the demand is coming back up. And those are manufacturing employees and people in our operations team. And the wonderful story about that is when we greet folks coming back to get their temperature take, because when they left, we weren't doing temperature taking, they're like, where do I go? I'm so excited to be back. So it's wonderful to rehire our team. I, I can't disclose that right here. We're a private company, so I, I just, it, it would make my mom upset if I did. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, to answer that question, it would be my hope that by the end of the year we are substantially uh, close to where we were when, when uh, we made the change. But again, that was never about a person, it was about the roles. And could we sustain a business with a dramatic downturn? I mean, we're talking close to 50% downturn in orders in a week to week basis. It's So we, um, first of all, the mayor served on the lieutenant governor's uh, reopening advisory board. His chief of staff, um, Catherine Burton, was part of every meeting and every discussion. And um, I had conversations with many of the colleagues in local government throughout this process. I think you had a standing call every couple of days um, with, uh, with local officials. Um, I think the, um, our, our recommendation was up to 25%. Okay, and we expect that some communities um, will go up to 25% uh, starting on the 25th of May. Um, the decision the city has to make, city of Boston has to make, is whether they want to go up to 25% on June 1st or up to some other number. But that was considered, from our point of view, a cap with respect to phase one. And we're expecting people will make decisions based on a variety of issues with regard to how far they want to go and how fast on that one. But that's the reason it's an up two.